Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments. Lord willing, every Friday, three o'clock Central Time, we'll come to you with Ministry Moments YouTube. So if uh, you could go to Ministry Moments YouTube and look up Bob Gray Sr. and go ahead and subscribe, that way you'll get this every week just as regular as can be. Uh, very practical, very simple, very helpful. Uh, Vince Lombardi said to the Green Bay Packers one time when he first took over the Green Bay Packers, he's fundamentals. Funny, he said, We're going to practice blocking and tackling, and we're going to do learn the fundamentals. Casey Stingle, when he took the Mets over when the, the Mets later won the World Series, he uh, was famously uh, uh, quoted about uh, how his first team meeting, he met everybody around home plate, and he took the uh, uh, media and made the media leave him alone. So he was on home plate, and there, then Casey Stengel, nobody could hear what he was saying except the players. Then he walked to first base, stood there for a while, walked to second base, stood there a while, walked to third base, stood there a while, and then went up back in home plate. Later on, they asked some of the players, what did Casey Stengel say? He said, boys, it all starts here at home plate. And if we don't get the first, we can't get the second. If we don't get the second, we can't get the third. If we don't get the third, we can't come home and we can if we do that more times than the other team we'll win and you'll keep your job <laughs> i love that i love that story uh, so today i want to talk to you about the word apothecary apothecary it's used in uh for medicine in, me in medical terms and uh the apothecary three things about it first of all it's preparation of medicine that's a part of apothecary preparation of medicine number two storing of medicine storing of medicine number three prescribing medicine for the need prescribing the particular medicine for the need you don't uh, go to your medicine cabinet and just go one pill next pill next pill next pill to keep going the doctor doesn't do that either and uh, so the apothecary so if you if you listen to me i believe that you'll find something that might be of, of help to the apothecary, the apothecary. I want you to vision now uh, a pharmacy and I want you to envision all the medicines up on, on the shelf. The, the preparation of the medicine has been cared for, the storing of the medicine labeled, it's cared for, and then it's prescribed according to a need. You don't just take one because it's the next bottle on the shelf. Um, um, and this is not a slap, but a expository preaching or anything it's all we do all of it we do all of it if you listen to the great men of the past they did it all uh, I, I did it all i didn't just do topical i did uh, all of it and so when we go to seed on one thing over another we're missing out uh, on the principle that's found behind this very thought of the apothecary are right, you ready here we go boys and girls number one counseling reveals the need counseling reveals the need uh when you counsel with your people or your sunday school class or your family or uh, or your staff when you counsel i'll tell you what uh, was going to be revealed needs would be revealed uh people would come in ask me questions about a particular problem they're having a need that they were facing and then i would try to give them a bible answer uh, for that particular need. I just didn't give them any answer from the Bible. I gave them ones that that pertain to that particular need. Uh, so number one, counseling reveals the need. Um, so if you want to understand the great preachers of the past and the great churches of the past, you have to understand that uh, they, they, were, they were different uh, and their churches grew because they knew the needs of their people and they made sure that they met those needs. It wasn't helter-skelter. It was all on, on purpose. So number one, counseling reveals needs. Number two, God's word supplies the answers. God's word supplies the answers. People come in and sit down. I'd always get my legal pad out and sit, sit there, and I would listen to them, and I would write down their question. I would write down a problem they were having or so on. And right in the middle of it, right in the middle of it, the Holy Spirit would say, here's the answer. Here's the answer. And I would quietly write it down and I would give them the answer, a Bible answer, biblical answer for a need, for a problem. 
I'm oftentimes they would look at me and they would say, at the other pastor, you are so wise. How did you, you're so wise. No, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit that gave me the answer from the scripture that I'd already studied and, and had gone over. You see, you don't realize this, but God is giving you answers even before the need even has arrived. Uh, he, 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 uh, is going to help you. Uh, you can't help but speak those things that you've deposited in your eye gate, your ear gate into your heart. So if you put more Bible in there than Dr. Phil or, or Oprah Winfrey, you're going to find out there's some real answers going to come from God, from God. All right. So number one, counseling reveals needs. Number two, God's word supplies the answers. Where do these, the Holy Spirit calls to remembrance, he's called to remembrance that which you've deposited. And so he gives you the answer from the scriptures that you've read. Number three, okay, I'm, I'm trying to help you with the apothecary. I'll tie it together here in a minute. I know you're wondering what's this got to do with the price of eggs in, in Georgia, but uh, all right, number three, get a sermon thought every morning. Open up, and as you read the scripture, allow God to give you a sermon thought every morning every morning, every morning. You see, he's doing a couple of things. First of all, he's giving you answers for the needs that you're aware of. He's also supplying you with answers for the needs that you're unaware of. So he's going to be able to recall to remembrance in a counseling session or talking to somebody that which you have already read and you got an answer, but you really didn't know how you were going to be able to use it, but God did. God did. All right. So I said, number one, we're talking about the apothecary. So don't leave me now and I'll tie it together for you. Apothecary. Counseling reveals needs. Uh, it's going to come up. And why are we here? We're here to help people. We're here to give answers to people. We're give, here. God's man receives from God and gives to his people. Uh, and so this is God's doing it this way. Sometimes needs that you're aware of. Most of the time, though, it's needs you're not aware of. And this is where preaching that is preventative is better than preaching that's curative. If you can allow God to use you, use your mind, use your thoughts, and use your study uh, to, so that you can prevent things from happening, that's a lot better than have curative uh, preaching. I know some people, they get a cancer. And, oh, it's a horrible. Cancer is a horrible thing. But uh, all of a sudden, now they get on carrot juice. Uh, now they start going to see and going to Mexico or holistic doctors. Well, it's better and, and better to have preventative uh, work done than curative work. Because once it's over, once it's there, there's not much that you can do. All right. Apothecary. Don't, don't let that word escape you now. Apothecary. Number one, counseling reveals needs. Number two, God's word supplies answers. Uh, number three, get a sermon thought every day. And if God gives you something, you may have something in mind, a need that you, this, oh, that's, that's the answer for this. It may be you don't know, but it's going to happen. It's gonna, so we write it down. All right. Number four, give it a skinny outline. When God gives you something in the morning, and I get a sermon every morning of the world. Now, so I give it a little skinny outline. Okay. Number five. Use the blank pages in the back of your Bible. I like the wide margin Cambridge Bible. I like that. But Dr. Jim Vineyard introduced it to me uh, back in the early 70s, and I fell in love with it. I just, I love, I've got 45 of them sitting on my shelf, 45 wide margin filled with outlines I've never preached and uh, Sunday school lessons and preaching and, and so on. So give it a skinny, little skinny outline. All right, number five. Use the blank pages in the back of the Bible uh, to make notation of it. For example, note the scriptures. Next, the page number that it's on, because the page number may be different than the scriptures, where the scripture is located. So give it a page number. Then give it a title. Put a title out there. Because as you go back and go through it, a title will jump out and grab you. Then write the date down. Write the date down. Now, use the blank pages in the back of your Bible to write down and get a sermon thought every day. Now, that sermon thought may be from a need that's come up. Wow, God gave you an answer. You may be scratching your head saying, why in the world is God giving me this? Because there's going to be a need that's going to come that you're unaware of. So I said, number one, counseling reveals needs. Number, now, I don't have a church. I don't have church members, but I have pastors all over the country and, and many places around the world who, who look to me and will contact me and talk to me, and, and they have problems. And I try my best 
to give answers. Sometimes it's things I've already studied. I didn't realize they were going to call about it, but it popped in my head and I was able to give an answer. Some, uh, when I read the Bible, it's because of a phone call and it resurrected that problem. And then I, God gave me the answer. So number one, counseling reveals needs. Number two, God's word suppl supplies answers. He'll call to remembrance. No, number three, get a sermon thought every day. Number four, give it a skinny outline. Number five, use the blank pages in the back of your Bible. Number six, caution, caution, caution. Sermons grow. Sermons grow. You may get so excited about a sermon thought and an outline, and you say, I can't wait to preach it. Hold it. Tap, tap the, tap the brakes. Tap the brakes. Because God's got illustrations for you. God's got the thoughts he's going to give you. He's going to add to it. And you'll go along a couple of weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, and all of a sudden, and something will happen. A perfect illustration for the sermon. A perfect introductory illustration. Just remember, sermons grow. Number seven, build an apothecary of sermons. That back blank pages in the back of your Bible. Well, if you could see any one of my 45 Bibles, you'll see the blank pages in the back just filled with titles. Filled with titles. All right. Now, build an apothecary of sermons. Be careful. You don't go from one sermon to the next sermon, to the next sermon, to the next sermon. It's on that shelf any more than you'll give this medicine, this medicine. You'll kill somebody. Uh, no. What you want to do is build an apothecary of sermons and be prepared for needs that are brought to your attention. Be prepared uh, because if, if, it has, if the need hasn't erupted, <laughs> erupted. If the need hasn't come to the surface, it's going to uh, uh, later on. So I'm just saying, build an apothecary of sermons. Next, stay fresh, stay fresh, stay fresh. Uh, last point, preach warm over sermons elsewhere, but you stay fresh for your people. Stay fresh, stay fresh. Now, there's no other way to do that except know the needs. No other way to do that except let God supply answers. No other way to do that than give it, get a sermon thought every day. No other way to do that than give it a little skinny outline, but it'll grow, it'll grow. Then use the blank pages to capture it, capture it in the back. And then caution, sermons grow. Don't rush out and preach it right away. Sermons grow. Next, build an apothecary of sermons. That's the blank pages in the back. Sermon title after sermon title after sermon title. Some will end up being Wednesday night Bible study series. Some on Sunday night, I would sit on the platform after I finished the day. And I would think about Sunday morning's message, Sunday night while they're baptizing. And I would sit there and say, will this make a good conference message? Will it? Well, if it does, then I note that, okay, that they're going to get the leftovers, but the people at LBT are going to get the fresh, fresh bread, and then preach warm over sermons elsewhere. I hope I tied it together. The apothecary, preparation of medicine, storage of medicine. Then number three, prescription. Have it prescribed for certain needs. You don't take medicine just because it's on the shelf. It has to be a particular, my wife takes a fistful of pills every day. Well, every one of them has a, has a purpose. Every one of them does. We just, the doctor just doesn't go, well, go from here to here to here to here. No, no, don't, don't do that. I think I've given you good, uh, solid counsel here. God bless you. Apothecary. Never forget that word, apothecary. And uh, God bless you. Now, every Friday, three o'clock central time, you join us and we'll take time. Uh, this is uh, this ministry moments. Very simple not complicated, and try to put that jelly on that bottom shelf where everybody can get a hold of it. God bless you. And go to softchurchproblems.com and subscribe there too. There's a weekly blog there. There's all kinds of tools there that'll be of help to you. Well, God bless you. Thank you for letting me be a part of your life this week. Three o'clock central time every Friday, soul winning tomorrow. It's the time. Win souls, get people saved. God bless you. I'll see you next week.